Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Through the Keyhole, and we have a special edition today, taking a look at four more entries submitted by you guys. So, let's jump in and take a look, shall we? So, before we jump in, the usual disclaimer, these of course are not my camps, these are entries from members of the community that have been submitted for our consideration, There's some very very cool builds here, looking forward to getting a few ideas and a little bit of inspiration. And if you guys would like to submit your own builds to appear on a future episode of this series, I am running rather low at the minute, so you should be uh, appearing reasonably soon. And if you would like to do so, all the information is over on the channel's community page, you can head over there and get all the details, and I look forward to seeing what you guys have built. Okay then, so build number one comes from Brother Aquarius and is located at the Monorail Tower on the border between the Savage Divide and the Cranberry Bog. Pretty popular location to build this, we've seen some very cool builds here before. We've got another very cool one here today. Brother Aquarius is on the Xbox, which is another very cool thing about doing these special editions. It doesn't matter what system you're on, you can uh, submit it from any system, PlayStation and Xbox included, which is great. So, we've, got, we've just finished this build at the Monorail Tower and wanted to go with the friendly raider vibe. Vending at the base of the tower for people who don't feel like mucking about in the camp. Water and basic camp essentials also available for anyone stopping by. Everything's walled off for security because when people fast travel to the camp, they tend to spawn enemies of the high ranking variety, mutants, scorch, death floors and wendigos, etc. Occasionally some of those enemies will be three star legendaries. That's definitely a bonus, nice easy uh, way to do a little bit of farming. So, we have a very, very cool build incorporating the monorail tower here. I like it a lot. Nice and secure. Good use of the uh, concrete filled tires there. Giving it that Raider vibe and making the place nice and secure. Got some uh, Yao Guai on the outside there as well. I like the mixed use of textures here. We've got uh, a few of the warehouse pieces as well as some of the wooden uh, guard posts there. A little bit of Mothman stuff. Some concrete and the concrete walls as well. Hard to fit those in sometimes, those concrete defensive walls. So. Good job done there. Nice to see them blending in quite nicely in the larger build without being too much, which is really, really cool. Nice little entrance there using one of the doorways and the foundations, which is a good way to build a sort of a guard post type entrance. It works quite well. I'm not sure if there's a door on there or if it's just open or what, but it's a good way for keeping the voice line denizens out and still allowing access as well, which is also a bonus. So swinging across a little bit, we can have a look more at this uh, warehouse structure. This is basically the staircase running up to the main part of the monorail tower which is cool nice and secure very tall i should imagine <laughs> nice wide angle on this one looking very very cool from this side plenty of spots to head up onto the guard post there and fire out on any unwanted visitors which is always good swinging around the back we've got a little structure attached to the back here expanding the buildable space inside which is cool very kind of reminds me a little bit of fallout 4 in an odd way despite the uh, fallout 76 textures which is cool so they secured off the back edge of the tower there and the concrete post the concrete walls rather yeah quite effective these are one of the few things in terms of the defensive structures that will sink properly into the ground so they do provide a nice little bit of uh, alternate heights and they'll follow the lines of the ground quite well which is always nice i might have tried to go with a little bit more substantial support than the posts but it's a bit of an ongoing battle that one i think for 76 the sort of support for tall buildings we have is rather limited so the eternal challenge of making it look substantial enough in 76 there we go, looking very, very cool. I imagine you've got a great view out from the back there as well, which is great. So heading on to the inside around the front. See, underneath the archway there, we've got the ply of ending, I think, down the bottom there. Kind of hard to see with the uh, smoke going on at the top, but I think, yeah, yep, that looks like ply of ending. Nice splash of colour from the cranberry bog plants there. Always good, definitely a good pick up if you can get those. A little uh, raider bathroom on the left there. I like the posts on either side of the foundations running down here as well. It's kind of a nice entrance way and... Nice leading lines on it, to use a little photography term there, which is really, really cool. Very, very good look. Nice sheltered little area for anybody stopping by. Swinging around the side a little bit, we've got a view over the staircase here. Nice little place to sort of survey the lower part of the camp, which is cool, as well as our entrance heading upstairs. And the reverse angle there over towards the door. Apparently no door, just a nice easy entrance way. Of course, I suppose if you lock the door you, to prevent anybody, any creatures getting in, I suppose players will have a hard time getting in, so that kind of makes sense there. Keep back to what I said before. Nice little new stand there, giving it, along with the uh, pumpkins as well, actually, giving it a bit of extra detail, a little bit more of that lived-in look, which is cool. Nice little guard post tucked in there as well, instead of using railings, which is always good. Using the staircases and the railings together can be a bit of a pain sometimes, so good solution to a problem there. It kind of follows the corner quite nicely as well, which is cool. 
So we're heading upstairs, we've got halfway up the stairs, a little area to chill out, take a look at the TV as well as get a nice view of the surrounding area. A couple of the candles there, the Mothman cultist lights, which is cool. Wish they put out a little bit more light myself, but uh, they are a nice little feature to have as well. An alternative to the lanterns that I tend to use an awful lot when I'm building, so nice to have those once in a while. And into the monorail tower. So we've seen a couple of builds here before that uh, I found various people have done. Most tend to really thoroughly enclose this space and having it open makes a nice little change, makes for a little bit of natural light, it's cool. Plenty of decoration and detail. Kind of hard to cram the camera in here a little bit to get the photos, which is a challenge, but nice job done with it. Nice little bit of stuff on the display shelves there. The, those are the uh, Thanksgiving display cases, like the Nuka Shine that's uh, Nice and neatly lined up there, along with the fashion app masks. Always very cool, got a spinning wheel in there. Nice little place to chill out as well. And the reverse angle there, so you've got the brewing stations as well. Very, very cool. Little uh, nuclear winter stuff as well. The little details, always worth keeping an eye on. They've got the little Mothman cultist light, I think that is, behind the sofa there, as well as a couple of other little plants in pots there as well. Stuff on the walls, always good. So it gives it that complete, full, lived-in look. And looking a bit further down, we're starting to get a bit more enclosed. And we've got that structure on the back. We've got the decontamination arch there. A few little details, the crafting area. Very, very nice. Lots of stuff on the shelves there in front of the generator. Just to give it more of a, a complete sort of scrappy, junky, almost lived in look as well. Brings up a lot more stuff. More bits and pieces dragged up from the wasteland, which is always cool. Little radio there as well. Very nice. Flipping that one around. Obviously, you can see the doorway halfway along there. Passing in through the power armor station, which is cool. It's hard to pull that off sometimes, it often feels a little bit too confined, but with it being a confined space anyway, that probably works quite well, so that does look good. It's got a little splash of colour above it there as well, very, very cool. And into the wooden structure tucked on the side, we managed to get that to hug the edge of the monorail tower quite nicely there, which is cool. That's uh, not the easiest thing in the world to do sometimes, it takes a little bit of patience, so very, very cool. Nice little uh, mixture of radar items here, a few mothman bits and pieces, some animal heads, always cool. I like the use of the toilet as a seat for that table as well, it's uh, something I wouldn't have thought of that, so it makes these things up quite nicely. It's definitely got that radar vibe, and very much the fallout sense of humour which I like as well, that's very cool. Got the uh, chemistry station and the cooking station tucked in just behind the fridge there as well. Using the chemistry station as a sink, which is uh, an oldie but a goodie that one. So yeah, we have a very, very cool looking little Raider camp at the monorail tower in the Xbox here. Very nice job done there by Brother Aquarius. Strong start. <laughs> okay, so build number two. I haven't got system or gamertag information on this one, but uh, the folder is named Grackthal's Home, so we're going to run with Grackthal for this one. And we look to be using the contemporary pieces somewhere in the Savage Divide, which is very, very cool. Got the Vault Boys out there providing a nice little welcoming entranceway on the porch there very cool nice little uh, place to chill out out front of the build there good use of the oil lamps here give it a nice little splash of that warming light so and swinging around we've got a nice sort of multiple structure build here which is very cool it's something i keep meaning to do but when the time actually comes never get around to doing so nice little combination of buildings here creating a nice enclosed sort of um, almost a courtyard inside the area between the buildings there nice to have a good wide shot here Good location, this looks reasonably flat, reasonably, <laughs> in and around the hills there. Plenty of room to build multiple structures, looking like a nice, well-established camp there. Heading on inside, one of my favourite little features, we've got the uh, fireplace there that pops up in the atomic shop from time to time. Nicely clipped through the roof there. Not too bad to do that, creates a, it stops the smoke being inside the building, which is always good, but uh, you have to put the fireplace in and then snap the roof on afterwards and it will go straight through the chimney, which creates a nice little chimney effect outside as well which is very very cool somebody chilling out on the sofa in the corner there lots of open space here I do like the windows at the top giving a bit of natural light and giving a little bit of extra headroom as well camps can feel quite closed in sometimes so that's very very cool bit open space i might try to squeeze a little bit more furniture into the sort of the middle of the space there myself but nice work with the brickwork there as well the wallpapers look very very cool nice looking little home going around to another side we've got a little kitchen area with a table a couple of Interesting chairs there. I've never actually used these myself. I don't even know if I've picked up the plan, if I'm honest, but uh, don't see them very often, which is cool. So it makes a nice little variation. A little kitchen tucked in the corner. Simple but effective. Got the rustic sink there next to the uh, cooking station as well. Very, very nice. Making good use of the curtains as well, which is always a good addition. Wonderful thing. Well worth picking up in the atomic shop if you get the chance. They make a big difference to any room. So 
very, very good addition on Bethesda's part, that one. Very cool. Tiny little bedroom tucked away in a corner from the look of this, which is cool. See, it's not the room you use the most, really, so you don't need vast amounts of space, which is cool. Nice little stash box in there, a few little bits of decoration, giving it a little bit more of that homely feel. A vault tech bed, which is sadly our only option for a bed with actual bedding, apart from, to be fair, possibly the bunk beds, but uh, they don't fit in every build, so definitely like a few more options down on that one, like a little uh, mountain painting over the bed as well. Got an angled roof there, actually, in the corner, which is cool as well. Creates a, a little bit of a, a change of shape and something else to draw the eye and break up the lines a little bit, which is very, very cool. I like that sort of thing as well. Swinging around to the outside of the main structure, you can see the chimney cu cutting through the roof there. Works very, very well. It's got a nice little bit of light coming in, and I'm guessing this is the evening we're looking at this here, which is nice. Give it a nice little uh, warming glow from the sunset. And we have our little courtyard surrounded by all the buildings here. Very, very cool. Nice little place to hang out around the fire barrel there. Might put one of the new fireplaces in maybe myself, giving it a nice little somewhere to sit. And you can get the rested bonus from that as well, which is a good alternative. Nice porter cabin tucked in the corner. Beckett's bar tucked up on the little sort of, I'm not sure what the structure is here. Generator shack maybe? Shed of some kind? Nice little spot to hang out anyway. A little bit of lighting coming up from the bar and draw the eye up there. A little bit of music if you want to hang out. Beckett's bar is cool but kind of an unfortunate thing in a sense it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the 76 style it's a very much a fallout 4 piece that's just been incorporated into 76 it's nice and it's a cool little throwback but hard to work in in a way that fits but tucked in nicely up here with its own little area it works well nice little seat in front of the bar if you want to hang out and have a chat with the proprietor there <laughs> and there we go into the biodome we've got the farmable dirt tiles on the bottom and this is a really good combination i don't see a great deal which is nice Putting, putting these two together, there's two different versions of the biodome. There's one with foundations and one without. So using the one without here allows you to have sort of a growing space inside, which is really cool and fits with the, the vibe of the dome as well, which I like a lot. A lot of people use it as a housing space with lots of light, largely because they're just using the foundations, which is fine and cool. I've seen some really good jobs done on that. It's uh, nice to see it used for growing crops as well, which is always a bonus. And having a look inside the long red barn structure, we've got a uh, generator down the end there and water purifiers i think on the right here nice little space for all the crafting got its own little home there little shed kind of vibe going on it's very very cool every little area has got its own function which is nice it always works well in a camp design that one using the uh, concrete foundations as well is very good as well obviously with the uh, workbenches and stuff it doesn't make a great deal of sense particularly with that armor bench to have it sitting on a wooden floor just waiting for the place to go up in smoke so always like to see that very very cool so, yeah all in all, a very nice looking, well-contained little camp using several buildings there, which is really, really good. I like to see that a lot. Very, very nice little build. Okay, so build number three comes from DPVM, and I haven't got a system for this one, but we have got a nice, clean, large looking structure at the White Spring. Got a lot of different elevations here, which is really, really cool. Nice kind of uh, reflection down the middle, which works pretty well for this one. It's looking cool. So DPVM says, Recently played with the idea of mega structures, and I designed a massive building housing a bar, workshop, and hotel. I know it's a pretty boring and oversaturated location at the White Springs, but was wanting it to have a lot more traffic as well as a nice green grass. So the biggest problem I personally have with the White Springs, apart from um, that it is so popular, is that um, the grass is kind of a contrast to the rest of the game. It seems a little too clean for my personal taste, but it's fine if you're into that. And you often find that the ghouls can be a bit of a hassle with your camp being set up there and they're constantly spawning. And the frame rates can also be kind of nightmarish around uh, the White Springs as well. So that's major reasons I tend to avoid it. I know it gets nuked as well, but it's not a major problem that generally these days. So not too much of an issue there, but we've got a very, very cool build here. Normally I personally shy away from large builds because it can be hard to make, it can be hard to make them look really good. This looks like it's been pulled off quite nicely, which is very, very cool to see. So we've got a nice mixture of textures here, a lot of different packs used. In fact, I can see, what, look at that, one, two, three, four different sets here so far, just in the one picture, which is really, really cool. Nice little porch area out the front, we've got barn structures around the outside, as well as the bricks in the middle. And the roof on the right there is using a different one of the textures as well. Might have copied it across to the left as well, since everything else kind of reflects, but all in all, very, very cool start. Take a look around the other side and see a little side porch here. Looks like we've got Beckett's bar tucked up the top there. You can just about see it peeking through the door. Plenty of different structures. We've got even some of the uh, warehouse pieces there as well. So mixing and matching in a big way. A little bit of decoration outside as well. Very, very cool. 
Looks like we might have had a, a ghoulie visitor down there as well. Not too surprising at the White Spring. Very, very colourful though. That's one good thing you can get with the White Spring is uh, it does make for very colourful builds. So moving inside, we've got first part of the bar. We've got uh, some totally new cold stuff around here. Nice use of the wallpapers and the floors there and the clean White Springs furniture. A lot of builds you'll find that uh, it's kind of too clean, but for something like this, it's working pretty well. So nice little jukebox in the corner. Got the brewing stations in the back as well. Looking like a nice little place to hang out. Nice little bar area. Definitely need to pick up those lights at some point as well. There's high tech lights I've yet to get my hands on, which is cool. Sometimes they can be a little low hanging, but it looks like they work quite well on here, which is nice. So we have a little crafting space with a table in the middle of it. Got all of the workbenches you need there. Plenty of stash boxes. A few little decorations on the wall. Looks good. It's um, spartan a bit, a little bit, but it kind of works for a crafting space. I've gone for the fluorescent light, which keeps that right kind of clean workspace vibe which is really really cool nice stone floors as well once again make sure the place doesn't burn down same with the brick walls even though it's only wallpaper of course but it does look very very cool back onto the veranda at the back with beckett's bar apparently beckett's uh, taking a break here just chilling out in the corner but nice little spot using the door works quite well with the bar it looks like it fits quite nicely in the gap there actually looks like a, a very snug fit between the two sides of the post there which is cool gives beckett his own little uh, hatch to serve from which yeah, that's nice. It's um, As I said before, it's hard to incorporate this sometimes, so done a nice job there. And you've got a little bit of access to the area at the back as well, which is also good. Nice little area. This is on top of where the bar is, I think. A nice view out towards the ash heap, looking a little uh, southwest here. Nice little view over the trees and the bridge at the White Springs there as well, which is very, very cool. Tiny little bedroom squeezed in, which is uh, off in the way. Nice use of the decoration though. Makes it look nice and busy. I like the TV on the end of the bed there. Kind of might have flipped it around myself and gone for a bit more of a, a modern TV rising out of the uh, unit look there, but very, very cool nonetheless. Do a little wall decoration, maybe? But uh, squeezed into a small space, it looks good. Nice view from the end on another bedroom here. Again, squeezing it into a confined space. We've got a different bed here, the uh, more um, ornate version, I think is the word I'm looking for. It looks good. Little space to hang out. I think this will be the hotel part of the build, I'm guessing, given the size of the rooms. But very, very cool. Definitely keeps that hotel kind of um, hotel in the wasteland vibe going, which is nice. And uh, another one here. Nice TV on the end. Again, plenty of stuff squeezed in. Everything you need in your little private room. Got a little bit of play of ending tucked in here, which is always good. Plenty of details there, the generator powering it right next to it. Enough room to get through there, nice little bit of decoration as well. Liking the use of the wallpaper and the uh, icicle lighting as well to give it a splash of colour. It pops up around Christmas from time to time. Very, very cool. Another of the high-tech lights that I'm immensely jealous of as well. I'm clearly a visitor at the camp. Looking good in there. So, yeah, lots of nice angles, lots of different um, shapes used in this build, which is really, really cool. And... Large structures, as I say, can often be hard to pull off, but this one's been done quite nicely and creates a really cool looking, very, very striking looking build as well, which is always cool to see. Very nice job done here by DPVM. Okay, for the last build of the day, I don't actually have any gamer tag or system information on this one, which is fine if you want to stay anonymous. However, what we do have is a very, very cool and detailed build here, which I like a lot. So we've got... A build themed on an American style petrol station with a built in diner and player home on the first floor. So, they would like to see some tarmac textured uh, foundations to kind of sort out that forecourt with, which would have gone in very, very nicely, although I think perhaps unlikely to happen, but nonetheless, very, very cool idea. So, the only minor change I'll be making is the first floor walls. I think there's ones at the back there with the windows that would like to see changed out for solid walls. Be honest i think as we'll see in a moment why i would probably keep them as they are because i quite like them but uh, not my camp so to each their own what we do have is a nice detailed look onto the forecourt here looking very well decorated nice use of the concrete tires on the sides as well as the fences there just to shore everything up make it look a little bit more solid and add a little bit more depth and texture to it which is always nice to see it really brings it to life very, very cool use of the uh, gas station signs as well out front there which and round the back as well actually which uh, I'm quite the fan of those things. They are very, very handy and quite versatile as well, which is really cool. So, a little bit more of an evening shot from down the road a little bit. I would like to know where this is because I do like the way the road kind of curves there around the build a little bit. It does look good. It would be a cool location to build in. I've got some theories, but I'm not quite sure. So, 
wouldn't mind knowing where this is. But we do have a nice look out at the piles of tires and a few uh, turrets there, just covering the approach on this side. Nice little veranda out there to chill out on. Very, very cool. The uh, new cola bottles that you can spot from a mile off, which is <laughs> very, very striking look and very cool. They fit quite well in here, which is cool. They're being that big, it can be a challenge to make them not look out of place. They certainly look like they work here, which is great to see. So looking at the forecourt, we've got the player vending in the center there, which is uh, using the free states vendor as well, which actually works really well as a kind of implied petrol pump with the barrels line, which is really, really cool to see. I like this one a lot. Good, good bit use of the build here. A little bit of uh, fluorescent lighting out there, giving a splash of illumination onto it. With it being outside, it won't be too bright either, which works quite well. Should blend quite nicely in with the uh, oil lamps that we've got at the back there. Very cool to see. Nice close up of those new cola bottles either side of the door to what is, I believe, the diner, which looks really, really cool, as we'll see in just a moment. So there we go, moving inside, we've got a uh, secret door behind the new cola machine there, which is uh, cool and definitely striking. Nice use of a mixture of uh, textures and uh, wallpapers and things like that. The walls are, there are actual diner walls added quite recently, but uh, this is a different set and it kind of changes it up, makes it look a little bit more original, which is very, very cool to see. Plenty of detail on the wall. Not the biggest space, which actually kind of works because uh, it makes it look more densely decorated, which is cool. A little bit of Nuka-Cola lighting on the tables there. All not liking the look of this. Very, very welcoming little space to hang out. Maybe have a drink, maybe get some food. Very, very cool. Little break from the road. Reverse angle there. Gives you a nice little look over the, the bar area, I suppose. Packed in with the uh, Red Rockets cooler in the back there in the fridge and we do with maybe a cooking station in there, but we've got the sink there as well, which is nice to see. The Eutatronic looks good on the wall there as well, I think. Something else I definitely need to pick up. Nice little details, they blend in really well and the eye kind of skates past them because they work so well, which is a good little detail. You have to kind of stop and look, which is great. I like to see that a lot. Very, very nice. So, at the edge of the forecourt we have a little garage area with the crafting area, plenty of stash boxes, nice little red rocket power armor station there, tucked in on a bit of an angle which is cool, don't see that too often which is working quite nicely here, I like it a lot. Plenty of details on the wall as well, nice little posters giving it a special colour, looking very very cool. Lots of stuff going on, the uh, stash boxes and the toolbox and stuff as well, making it look very much like a garage type crafting facility which is very, very cool. It's like a, an ammo machine in the back as well, always handy to have, very nice. So heading out to the back area now, I'm guessing this is behind the diner and the uh, garage there from the look of this, just sort of trying to figure out the angle on this. We have a nice little bit of external wallpaper just to mix up the textures, which is always nice to see. Challenge to pull off sometimes, but it looks reasonably good here, reasonably clean. I might have gone for one of the stone textures maybe for the wallpaper rather than the wooden one, just because that wooden sort of laminate wood looks a little too clean from an outside point of view, for my taste, but once again, not my camp, so to each their own. Nice use of the um, conduit poking through the wall there as well, which is exactly what it's intended to do. It certainly solves the problem of getting power from the inside to the outside. Something I need to remember is an option, a little bit more option. A little bit more option, a little bit more often, which is always good. Any nice little details there with the, the Red Rocket conduits as well, which is cool. Flipping that one around, we can see we've got a couple of the farmable tiles tucked in there, with just a little bit of food, enough to keep the player fed. We've got a water purifier in there as well that is got the foundation going through it so i'm guessing the the purifier went in first and the foundation afterwards but that looks pretty cool saves you having to have that blank bit of ground to put the thing in which is nice i wonder if you could put that onto a farmable tile i'll try that at some point which is an interesting thought yeah very, very cool nice little enclosed garden out the back of the build which is always good heading on inside we have a nice little um, living room sort of lounge area with the fireplace which was added at christmas although it has made an appearance in the atomic shop since Makes a nice change to the red one and a nice sort of focus and centre point for any kind of living room build, which is cool. And of course, as we see here, we can put stuff on top of it, which is always nice as well. Relatively small space here, curtains making it look good. Very, very colourful, which is cool. Very clean for the most part, apart from the stash boxes. But yeah, nice little space, this. Like it. Lots of decoration, lots of detail. It gives it a, a very welcoming looking style. So heading upstairs we have a bedroom tucked in behind a couple of curtains as well instead of a doorway which is nice. Makes a, a change doing that. That's something I've tried out before as well, it's quite cool. Making it fit is often a challenge but with these particularly long curtains it does look cool. They seem to stand on the floor more than snap to the wall, kind of do a bit of both which is 
gives them a little bit of uh, versatility, which is always nice. Got the lamp in the corner, tucked in there, making good use of the space, cramming in everything we can. Little desk area, very, very nice. Nice view out of the window at night as well. Which is absolutely fine until the super mutant comes wandering, wandering down the road. But uh, very, very cool. Nice little space. Lots and lots of colour with the hubris uh, wallpaper as well, which is cool. Actually works quite well in this space, especially with the contrasting wall around the windows, which is cool. And another little seating TV room area, which I think this is next to the bedroom from the look of things. Again, small space just behind the curtains there. Somewhere to chill out, nice uh, quiet area for a few minutes of respite from the terrors of the wasteland, which is always cool to see. Do love that little fish lamp in the corner as well, very, very nice. Yeah, I think I would keep those windows personally. I think they look quite nice in here, create um, a nice unique look and feel to it. But uh, especially with the view out onto the road, you sort of still see what's coming from a seated position, which is nice as well. Gives it a nice looking sort of change. It's made a change from uh, just using ordinary walls, which is cool to see. I like it a lot. So, all in all, a very, very cool little uh, gas station type build with a few little extra bits and pieces tucked in there as well. Very, very nice. So, some very, very nice builds today. Very cool stuff. Good work on the part of everybody who submitted. Thank you very much for doing that. If you guys would like to appear on a future episode of the series, then all the details, as I said before, are over on the community page if you'd like to send your builds in. Very much look forward to seeing what you guys are building. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, got a little bit of inspiration, do appreciate likes and subs. Very, very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store, and channel memberships if you're interested in supporting the channel that way are available via the description as well. And I hope you join us for one of the live streams as well, playing a little bit of Horizon Zero Dawn and plenty of Fallout as well. So look forward to seeing you there. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.